if you're asking yourself if you might have an eating disorder, I would say that question alone is a red flag because nearly everybody I've ever worked with can describe having known they had an eating disorder and when they look back on it. So you might not be admitting to yourself you have an eating disorder at the time, but then retrospectively, once you're recovering, you'll be able to see. So I would say take a really honest look at your thoughts and your behaviors and how they have changed and whether you can apply changes to them. So one good thing to try would be, um, let's say you're, you have a rule with food that you've cut out a whole food group. Um, I would say one way you could tell if you have an eating disorder is for the next week, try eating that food group, bring it back. If you can't bring it back, that is concerning. If your eating disorder tends to have more of an exercise compulsion to it and you seem to not be able to miss a day of exercise, try going a day without exercise. If So you can try some experimenting yourself. If at the end of those experiments, you feel like you're making excuses for why you weren't able to apply the changes, um, then you should definitely reach out for help because eating disorders are so serious, they're life-threatening, and the sooner anybody gets help, the better. So you wanna reach out for help soon so that you can m get and fully recover from the eating disorder and also just so your body doesn't get ravaged. You know, there are medical consequences to eating disorders, what is what makes them so dangerous. And the longer your mind sits in that eating disorder type thinking, the more rigid it becomes, the more entrenched it becomes. And also you become kind of isolated from people because eating disorders often interfere in relationships. As you start placing a lot of control on your thoughts around food and eating and exercise, you start often isolating yourself from friends and family and thinking about food and calories and that kind of thing all day long. So you might be having a conversation with a friend, but really in your mind, you're kind of replaying what you ate for breakfast, how many calories you have left according to your rules, and you're not really listening to your friends. So this is the way that it can really interfere in relationships. You might be feeling dizzy. You might notice you're cold more than uh, you used to be. You might notice fatigue or t trouble concentrating. There are so many possible medical complications. These are just a very few. And what's, what's happening inside of you is what's happening outside of you. So if you are looking to lose weight and that's how your eating disorder is started and is being maintained, that is happening inside you too. And so your heart muscle is shrinking and that's why you're getting cold because your heart rate is, is slowing down. Your body is aware that it doesn't have the nutrition to, um, I mean the energy, because your nutrition is energy. So if you're not giving yourself enough food, you don't have enough energy for your heart to pump your circulation of your blood all the way to your extremities. Your body's very wise and it will start to just not circulate blood all the way to your extremities. So your, your feet and hands get very cold now. And that's a good thing because your body's conserving. It, it thinks it's on a desert island. It doesn't know you're starving yourself because that would be kind of against our species, right? Like we couldn't survive if people, if it was like a healthy thing to do to starve ourselves. So when your body knows it's in this compromised state, it's not getting enough nutrition to have the energy to, to run all its systems, it starts shutting down certain systems. So that's why your hands and feet are getting cold. You might get dizzy, you might have trouble concentrating. Your body is basically starting to um, you know, shut down. And so it's really important if you notice any of the physical symptoms, any of the relationship symptoms, or any of the um, food or exercise uh, behaviors in your life that are changing. And please keep in mind that full, full recovery is possible and you can have a good life again. You just have to get out of this illness. Even if you're ambivalent, even if it's hard to access care, please reach out to somebody who loves you 
or to um, your regular medical doctor and let them know. Let them know how you're struggling and what you've tried and what, what you know, kind of um, situation you're re really in. Try to be as honest as possible.